Hello everybody, this is Sandeep here. Welcome to 12W12M series where we are going to conduct the uh, 12 webinars in 12 months. Uh, this is the series in which uh, we are upgrading the awareness of the civil engineering candidates. Uh, in this webinar, what is the topic that we have come up with? This topic is extremely important from the civil engineering point of view, specifically from the analysis and all. Uh, the topic is the structural analysis. All right. During the last session, if you know that we have studied many things about the modeling types. So I'll just uh, get started, right? So if you see here, you can see that we have studied the different types of grids. Like say, for example, we are having the uh, floor grids, then plane frame, space frame, um, the floor grid analysis, and many things we have studied during the last, uh, you know, the session. In this particular session, we are going to study the analysis type topics. Right, so what are the different types of analysis are there? I have elaboratively given all the different types of analysis possibly that I can explain you during this session over here. Right, this particular, are these are the only types of analysis? No, there are varied variety of analysis is there. Right, basically what do you mean by analysis? Analysis is like, let's say for example, you give certain loads and the stiffness actually and try to calibrate that whether the member is buckling whether the member is bending whether the member is failing under the shear and all actually and uh, there is a linear static analysis that everybody knows and that is generally you know calculated during the college days actually if you take the simple line diagram actually let's say for example if this is the case right you are having certain load here and this is the length actually and this is the w okay w l square by 8 okay so that is the bending moment diagram Right, so if you see that, you know, whatever the uh, the uh, uh, determinate and inter indeterminate structure, the structure becomes a little complex actually if, you know, you are having something like this. If let's say for example, if you are having something like this where this is the fixed supports, right, the structure becomes even more complex if you are having something like this. The structure become even even more complex actually if you are having the something like this which is the space frame analysis all right so we have studied during last time actually when it comes to the individual line beam line element all right and we have also seen the plane frame and the space frame but we are not going to discuss about the different types of total frames and all in this particular topic or in this particular session in this particular session we are going to study many things about the different types of analysis and the college days what we have studied and in reality what all the different types are there right so let's get started first is the linear static analysis linear static analysis what is that you know you are having the basically you might be knowing this diagram okay the stress versus strain you know it is linear curve but when it goes later on actually it goes to the non-linear analysis because this cannot be determined something like this over here if it is a steel there is a different curve if it is a concrete there is a different curve and all actually we have studied during last you know so many years during the college days so basically this is a complex equation so we don't consider this so we make sure that you know the structure lies within this particular zone but is this the only reason that we go for the linear static analysis no there are various reasons one reason is actually the complexity right complexity what do you mean go by complexity if you see the linear static analysis you know the input parameters you know the input equations and you know the output variables and their determinate behavior so it is not indeterminate structure it is a determinate structure Right, so it is very very simple. The complexity doesn't exist. All right, so and it is very easy to you know numerically solve certain equations. All right, so it is easy for any particular student to calculate through the calculator or through the log bag, log book, logarithmic books, and all actually, and get the answers very easily. But in reality, do all these things helps us? Okay. So the real answer you only need to tell me before you know we finish the session. All right. So if you see that what is nonlinear analysis, let's look into the nonlinearity option. All right. So what are the different nonlinear options are there? If you see that in the static analysis only, we are having the nonlinear option which is the geometric nonlinear, 
we are also having the material nonlinear option in the geometric nonlinear um, nonlinearity we are having the p delta analysis p delta buckling pushover creep shrinkage material okay in which the geometric nonlinearity will be having only p delta buckling and pushover in the material nonlinearity we are having creep shrinkage and material strength what do you mean by the nonlinear analysis and these two types are what it is so let's say for example we are having some cantilever here and you will see that whenever you are applying the force it is going this is the l and we will see that l plus delta i some particular length will get increased obviously because of the elongation of that particular member the moment you re reduce or delete this force it will regain its original position all right so that is necessarily the static and linear behavior all right but the moment you are having delta l it is no more a linear it becomes a nonlinear and it is having a geometric nonlinear behavior and having a delta effect why because this is delta you can take this as a delta 1 right what is delta 1 is the deflection between this and this so whenever any element you are considering okay you are taking some horizontal forces above it so let's say i'll delete this and i'll redraw it with the pen like this over here so if you are having horizontal force let's say p here and you are having delta here this is the delta effect so it's not only the the horizontal force of something sometimes you know you will be having the same problem with the vertical force why because you might be having some kind of you know architectural designing problem so let's say for example if you know you are this is the building you are having this is the center of mass and you are having this is the center of stiffness which is center of rigidity some people they call it as center of stiffness some people they call it as center of rigidity actually both are same okay both are just the synonyms to, of each other now if you see that let's say for example i'll just draw this a little aside so that you know it would be a little easier for you to understand now if i want to give certain forces here so let's say for example if i give a particular force here i'll just draw it with a little darker pen so if i give a force here actually you will get the resultant at this point why because this is the stiffness center all right this is the force center this is the stiffness center so in this case what happens actually you will get to know certain delta bending moment which is a torsion all right so let's say for example i'll call it as delta let's say delta 1 instead of x and y all right similarly if you apply the force in the other direction let's say for example i'll just take the different pen color so that it is easier for you so if i apply the force here similarly you will get the reaction in this case so in this particular case also you will have a particular effect which is let's say delta 2 this is delta 1 and this is delta 2 so let's give certain figures actually over here so let's say for example this one is uh, let's say ex which is earthquake force in x direction all right and this is let's say ey which is earthquake force in y direction so what happens is when it comes to the numerical equations you will see that delta ex multiplied by this is delta 1 okay this would be the torsion is it the what kind of torsion it is the actual torsion i'll just say okay Apart from this, you will get the accidental torsion. What is meant by accidental torsion? Accidental torsion means, let's say for example, imagine that this is, you know, your floor plan of, imagine that your father is running a grocery business here. And at this particular place, due to corona or whatever the situation is there, actually he put up, some very heavy material there stocking the material or let's say gehu jawar you know all that thing actually because there is rice for example because it might be needed and you don't know when the next time the delivery it is so what happens is certain actually the center of stiffness doesn't change this guy doesn't change 
but this guy which is the center of mass it changes slightly towards this side from what accident so this is the accidental torsion that we are saying what is the accidental torsion what is the distance actually the distance what we call it as a calibration so let's say for example this is the b b into 0.05 five percentage it's a it's it's the accidental torsion so whenever you are applying the force ex multiplied by delta one is the actual torsion plus 0 0.05 times the b this is the b you take as bx here and take the by here or vice versa you can name anything there you, i'll just take the 0 0.05 times b Actually, we'll take this plus and minus because we need to take the worst load combination. Sometimes it is this side, sometimes it is this side, right? This so this side it will be plus, this side it will be minus. We'll take either plus or minus times 0 0.05 times b actually, and this also will be multiplied by again the ex, right? So this is we call it as the actual torsion. This is accidental torsion. right so i'll just take it this side so that you can see this all right so you can see that you will see the delta x multiplied by uh, 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 ex multiplied by delta 1 which is the torsion and you will get the accidental torsion because of that what will happen is this building will try to tend to move to that side so let's say for example i'm having a laptop bag I'll, I'll just try to strain myself to that side if I don't give the equivalent force, imagine that I'm holding a laptop bag here. Let's two laptops in the back. What will happen? I'll, I'll start, you know, moving in, uh, deflecting in that direction. I need to, my muscles has to give a lot of strain to balance the equation. Otherwise, I'll fall down. I'll, if I faint, actually, I'll fall down. All right. If, if I don't balance the equation, what will happen? I'll fall down, right? I don't want to do that. I don't want to, the building doesn't want to fail down. Right? So it has to give that kind of stiffness. All right? So how much that would be? Okay, that depends upon how much amount of torsion that it is happening. All right? So is it only due to the horizontal force of earthquake or something? No, it might be due to its own weight. Let's say laptop bag is not somebody is pushing me from back. All right? So what happens is it is just due to the laptop bag. It's additional weight. It is just due to maybe this material that is stopped, no horizontal force. The vertical force is getting deflected, all right? So what happens is, this is not the linear behavior. This is something which is non-linear. And what is non-linear means? It is due to the, self, this because of the self-weight. Imagine this guy is holding a laptop bag here and this guy is deflecting. The building is deflecting, all right? So since it is deflecting, we'll see that there is a delta, and due to that, there is a nonlinear geometric P delta effect. All right. So is it linear? No, big no. All right. It is a nonlinear behavior. Is it studied in the college? No. Unfortunately, it is only through certain uh, you know equations and all actually, but the practical numerical problems actually we didn't we couldn't get a chance to go through that. Because it's little complex. How it is complex? Let's look into it. So let's say for example, I'm having a building here, and I have let's say the mass here. Actually, this will get deflected due to the center of mass shifted. All right. So this is mass. I'll take this as a particular force here. I'll take this as a p as a force. M is the mass, it's okay, but mass is required for the horizontal accelerations and all also. But I'll take this as a P to make it like simpler. So same P, it is getting deflected like this over here. So this is P1 multiplied by delta 1. Because of this actually, again the second order bending moment will start. And you will see that the deflection has increased due to the P1 into delta 1. Understood? Again, due to P1 into delta 1, some more deflection will come. Maybe I'll take some different pin. It is like this over here. So again, this will be P2 into delta 2. 
again it will be some more it is p3 into delta 3 understood so up to what extent you can go p1 into delta 1 so let's say for example this is p2 into delta 2 p3 into delta 3 where it is going so it will stop with certain value we call it as the iterative process somewhere it has to stop all right so when it comes to the analysis actually I'll just unlock this you will see that there is a convergence tolerance that now this is it all right so somewhere we need to stop it so this is the tolerance limit all right to this extent once the deflection comes up the equation will stop because the resultant is barely nominal you can just keep it off it will not make a huge difference to the equation all right so this is the this is the tolerance limit actually that's what actually we will be seeing it into the p delta analysis all right is it really really important yes of course all the buildings actually you will see that this is the project in which you know can you guarantee me that you know the center of mass and center of rigidity is exactly at the center no way right all right so i'll just take the pen up in this case it's not guaranteed that you will see both the things together there might be the center of mass will be somewhere here center of stiffness would be somewhere here and because obviously that actually some kind of bending moment will start all right so it is not guaranteed that you will have the proper you know there is a you know it, it looks similar actually but you know this is the lift core this is the lift or this is another lift core this is the staircase this is another staircase but you will have different configuration over here right you cannot see that it is exactly same and plus there is a curve it is not a straight line so complexity will go on increasing my dear all right so it's very very important for you guys to understand that this is never ending what you need to do is you need to manage the equation with what with the numerical problems so that's why various different analysis you have to do it not only the linear static also along with that the nonlinear geometric nonlinearity with the p delta or buckling analysis what is buckling analysis let's say i give you one punishment to just stand can you please stand for just for a minute can you yeah please thank you sit down now it is just for a minute so it's okay if i make you stand for two hours still okay two days will you really stand come on let the building stand throughout the life of the structure don't you think that the you want to sit down somewhere for god's sake don't you think that the building wants to sit down can you let you let the building sit down like that no continuously the forces are coming through the gravity and all unlimited and till the life of this till the building comes down to the gravity it is just a war is happening the gravity resultant forces that's a buckling analysis right so due to its self weight actually if the structure is getting buckled it's a buckling analysis you will see the buckling analysis if the structure is tall enough quite a tall and a stiff very tall structure standing imagine that your legs are very you are heighted like giraffe legs and the strength is not like giraffe maybe like human you'll see that the legs are paining tremendously surely right so that's the buckling analysis is it really real yes if it is not real just stand for a day and your legs will tell you come on i'm buckling please sit down all right okay so this is the buckling analysis when to do how to do what to do where to do how to check all these types will be there somehow actually we have to cover so many different types of analysis so we may not be able to go to those areas 
but p delta analysis is my, i just wanted to tell you that these are the real types of analysis in the college days actually we have just studied the linear static analysis it's of i mean i'm not saying it's of no use i'm just saying that this is not enough All right so next one is pushover analysis pushover analysis how far to push push over what is that you know you're doing some yoga or something stretching oh, do like this like this something okay so let's say if i want to do like this how far i can go down back i'll just go down like this like an arch can i go arch and come back again again go back it's impossible come on my spinal cord will start my god i can't imagine also so what does that mean how far you can push push over analysis push over is it over not over again push again push again push till the time you know the structure says now this is enough that is a push over analysis is it required yes to calibrate the strength let's say for example this mobile i want to check how far you can throw it down and it's still okay how far i can put this in under the water still it's okay push over analysis generally used for the buildings to find out the performance of the structure please understand this early bracket come on one more time performance of the structure all right now what what do you mean by performance of the structure let's say for example this is a mobile i put some case on this why it is for that if somebody for you know by by mistake if it is falling down actually mobile should not get crashed everybody uses that right you need to protect it the cost of the mobile and cost of the let's say the screen guard or something whatever the accessories that you are taking it's is it comparable now come on the mobile will be in the range of 15000 80000 something like that or maybe 1 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees but if if you see the screen guard actually it might be some 5 10000 maximum maximum right not even 10 percentage but it is needed to escalate to increase the lifespan of the structure that is the push over analysis is it required yes definitely yes to understand the performance of the structure understood right so this is is this the static analysis everything boss is is in the static analysis we'll come to the dynamic analysis after a while all right then what is the creep shrinkage and material strength creep analysis is like oh no i'm feeling like creeping what is this word what does that mean it's something like constant you know the pressure tension you know that particular reaction will lead to lead for you for creeping what does that mean i'll give you the practical problems all right imagine that you are going through a bridge for example in india we design we don't know the design more than a simply supported design. the bridges are only simply supported there is not a continuous there is a break in between so what will happen every bridge is the simply supported so wl square by 8 maximum deflection is at mid span so whenever the vehicle is there imagine that we are going through a car or a two wheeler or something you will get some dig 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 kind of sound have you heard about it i'm sure you are later on when you go through a vehicle actually you will see the difference you know you will say dig 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 like that why because there is a maximum deflection here zero deflection here maximum deflection here zero deflection maximum zero maximum zero so what is that creep this decking is a big hell a big load it will give you the kind of some kind of strain means the deflection thermal strain is a deflection it's a cramp right it's a deflection that is happening who is going to support it after let's say 50 years actually the bridge has got constructed all the politicians all people will come and hold you thank you for giving the service for 50 years is it possible that way to give you the the support it's impossible right <laughs> it's impossible so the self weight plus the vehicle load it's going continuously 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 increased in the vehicles tippers will go trailers will go 
day by day the population is increasing so obviously the load will also get increased right so if you see that this would be the maximum deflection zero deflection maximum deflection so if you see what is this maximum deflection the linear elastic deflection will go back once the vehicle is there but still the self weight is there it's not gone due to the constantaneous torture you will get the cracked deflection and due to continuous action it will be having the creep deflection creep right this is like a young boy this is like a little little mid age person and this is the old age person creep analysis I hope you are getting what I am saying. Right. So is it really happening? Are you designing the bridge for a day or two just to freak out? No, right. Is it for a year or two? No, right. It is for generations to generations, right. It is for you, for your, it is for your father, for you, for your son, as long as it can. All right. So creep analysis, is it really a, a real type of analysis? The answer is yes. All right. Are we doing it? I haven't heard about it. <laughs> All right. So is it possible in Indian code? Yeah, there are three lines given in the code with the creep coefficient and all. Is it sufficient? Answer is big. No. Then what code you will be using? ACI 318, American Council. Then CBFIP code. Euro code. So such kind of codes are required to do deal with this type of analysis. Again, is it a required? Do you want to die in the young age? Come on. Do you want to die in the as a kiddo? No, not as younger age. No, just you got married and you got died. Is it okay? Is it a good life that you lived with? No, right? You want to die and get older. Am I right? That's a full-fledged life. Similarly, the structure has to have a full-fledged life. Am I right? Come on, right? So creep analysis is a real type of analysis and it is must, it has to be done. So what is this code all about and all actually just Google it out, ZBFIP code, it is half of the telephone directory. I will not be able to take the such kind of thing, but it is really needed. Through the software, you know, the life is a little bit more easier. Let me show you a few things actually. If you go here. Let's say M40 or something actually, you can go to the time dependent properties and you can give this creep analysis. This is what I was talking about, CBFIP code, ACI, Australian code, this CBFIP, the latest version, this is the Euro code, this is the New Zealand code, where is the Indian code? Ooh, there is no Indian code. If you guys are doing PhD, please do this in this. Get some user values, get some coefficients and all. In PhD, you know, you'll be a doctor, somebody. <laughs> right? Why? Because it is really needed here, the creep analysis. We don't have the Indian coefficient somehow. Right? Got it? So CBFIP code, which you can use it. You can give certain cement type factor, relative humidity factor and certain creep coefficients. You'll get certain graphs like this and, you know, you, you can complete the entire creep analysis and you can find out basically how much is the creep after let's say 10th day to this day and you can get this figure the software will add it add these figures right for you for this particular concrete when you are using over here that's how actually the creep analysis can be done what about the shrinkage is it needed you know the whenever you are pouring the concrete it is there in the semi solid or semi liquid kind of form right so it get you know already the drill that heat of hydration will come it will come consolidated and all actually there would be the again more heat of hydration will come and it will start to binding in there will be initial setting time will be there if it is not you know, creating the conducive equation actually, it will create a crack which is called as the shrinkage crack. Immediate concentrated crack in the concrete is due to the shrinkage. Right? Don't get panic with this. 
right there are so many options are there where you can get rid of this shrinkage but is it really good for the structure answer is big no it will crack any in non engineering crack is a failure come on say with me any non engineering crack is the failure right what is the engineering crack then expansion joint construction joint is engineering crack engineered crack right i'll tell you one more example engineered crack example let's say this is the satellite i'm very bad at you know creating the drawings somehow this is a satellite isro nasa all people put billions and billions of dollars designing and e construct sandeep pingla is designing the support conditions for this and the satellite has started and says sandeep pingla mentors of structural engineers they put this the satellite is not going whoops it is designed by me come on <laughs> satellite won't go full tight is it a good design hopeless design right at certain thrust once the satellite actually gets to the torque actually it should get broken at actually it should go that's the purpose creeping actually at what time at what thrust this guy gets collapsed right is it really needed answer is yes answer is big yes where it is needed many places i have given you few examples you can figure it out later on compressive strength definitely needed 3 days of you know cube testing 7 days cube testing we do it every day every concrete mix 3 days 7 days 14 days 28 days compressive strength is it really getting that much amount of strength compressive strength that is actually the material non linear analysis all right so we have studied this static analysis now similarly what is dynamic analysis what is the difference between static and dynamic analysis imagine that you have proposed to a girl or if you are a girl you are proposing to a boy and the boy is saying you know something or a girl is saying something like this then there is a chance that the answer might be yes but you know big slap answer is big no correct okay so one type of analysis actually like this you know static analysis another one is the dynamic analysis force is same effect is different do you agree somebody is pushing you from back and somebody is kicking you from back your reaction is different you want some more examples i'll give you one more example imagine that this is a nail this is my digital pen but i wanted to give you one example uh, imagine that this is the the door if i put the static force over here will it go inside no but if i put the dynamic load by taking the hammer like this will it go yes same force with the dynamic in nature it works differently right this is the difference is it really needed of course it is needed earthquake do you think that earthquake is coming oh my dear buildings i'm waiting for you will it come like this no it's a big slap to the structure khada correct dynamic analysis definitely needed linear dynamic yes there is a non linear dynamic also oh yeah okay in the linear dynamic what all the different types are there response spectrum analysis modal analysis time stress analysis what is response spectrum analysis there is a spectrum curve is there actually hmm. i don't know most of you might not be knowing there is a response spectrum curve like this it goes to the infinity hmm. this is s by g this is the time period which is the approximate time period right and this is actually what is sa by g spectral acceleration with respect to the gravity do you think that during the event of earthquake gravitational force is zero
ड्यूरिंग द इवेंट ऑफ अर्थ कोई ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्स इज जीरो कम ऑन इम्पॉसिबल अदरवाइज ऑल विल बी देयर इन द स्पेस ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्स कैन नॉट बी जीरो बट हाउ मच मोर इज द ग्रेविटी दैट इज एक्टिंग दैट इज एक्चुअली सोडाइजिंग Is it really weird to understand? I would like to tell you one thing. Imagine that you are in the class. I am also there as a your, you know, friend in the class. And I put some, let's say, I put a plug in my head. I think I don't have it here right now. Okay, imagine that you know some iPod plugs are there in the head, and I will say, D D E E E E E E E E E. all of will 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 look at me that what the heck is this guy yes everybody is experiencing some kind of atmosphere and this guy is experiencing something more that's what it is every building is experiencing the gravity but the certain part of the earth is experiencing a little bit more how far more is the earthquake force how far more is the sudaji right so this is basically the response spectrum okay modal analysis what is mean by modal analysis aaj mera mood nahi hai picture dekhne ka come on okay what do you mean by modal analysis first mode second mode third mode right different modal analysis is there i think i have created a beautiful video here actually this is the video it is there in our youtube channel please subscribe it and go through that that video you will find out very important features about the modal analysis those who don't want to watch i will just give you a glimpse about it first mode second mode third mode whenever the earthquake comes imagine that you know somebody comes and slaps you what you will do kill him beat him you will give one more slap what is the behavior what is your nature you will go to the police you will go to the headmaster what you will do that depends upon you know your indigenous individual behavior that is the modal analysis the modal analysis will tell you the behavior of the structure this is like a psychology right you will understand the psychology of a person you will understand the psychology of the structure it's very important to you to if you are a doctor you must understand the psychology of your patient similarly if you are a structural engineer you must understand the psychology of the structure that you are dealing with and this very modal analysis will tell you like this imagine that you are proposing a girl atika khandala if a very big slap is there answer is big no but if the girl is saying that my father is not at home there is a homework i what i do there is a chance we call it as mixed mode the chance is yes first mode or second mode might be interchangeable behavior understood but in the structure we require the distinct behavior all right is it really needed of course it is needed modal analysis if you don't understand the behavior of the structure what the hell you can design the structure right modal analysis next one is time history analysis what is time history it's what is this earthquake this is the time domain and this one is the displacement at what time how much amount of displacement is happening this is the time history analysis understood so what is the difference between this and this time history and this analysis there is a synthetic earthquake and many many things are there actually i'll not go too much deep into this otherwise you know you'll get headache about about it but all the earthquake forces are inter this and the, from here to here there is a 
inverse Fourier series transformation that will happen to form this particular curve. This and this is same only. Right? So the difference between time history and time history is more accurate. Why? Because it is complied with, let's say, time history of the Bhuj earthquake, time history of the uh, Nepal earthquake or some uh, Killari earthquake. But this uh, response spectrum is like from the entire India, it is one graph only. It is like a standard. Right? So, both the types of analysis are related to the dynamic analysis, modal analysis also I had told you. Are these only the types of analysis? No, my dear, there are many types. Okay, I have just covered this month. If you want to hear the other types actually, there is a non-linear analysis is also there which is covered to the response spectrum, modal and this, which leads to the very beautiful concept which is the PBD, performance based design. Which comes with the nonlinear time history analysis. Don't you see that? If you go here, you can add a new function which is response, uh, sorry, the uh, time history analysis, which is FNA, fast nonlinear analysis. And you can add certain values here, which might be the static or maybe accelerations. You can add the functions also. And this nonlinear uh, FNA time history analysis would help you to give the performance tips. Right? So, is it needed? Do you don't want to see the performance of the building? What is the cost of the mobile? 50, 80,000. What is the cost of your car? Maybe 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs. What is the cost of your house? Might be in crores. If 80,000 is your uh, is your uh, let's say the mobile cost you will be living in one crore villa or an apartment don't you want to see the performance if you want to see the performance of this mobile by putting the cap on this you don't want to see the performance of this building is it needed of course it is needed you don't realize it it is needed all right so all these types of analysis are required to satisfy the building stability, performance, durability, and the um, you know the serviceability and strength criteria as well, right? So when to use this type of analysis? I've given you the different equations, different uh, examples. I'm sure that you would have really liked it and loved it. If you really liked it, please give a thumbs up. If you really loved it, please subscribe the channel, and please make sure that you will come to the next time. 12W, 12M sessions, 12 webinars in 12 months, right? So if you are having any sort of doubts, please add it in the chat boxes. I'm recording this session a little earlier, all right? So uh, I would be, you know, chatting with you, giving the answers there during that time because I want to use, I want to be with my family during this 31st of uh, the December and hopefully the next year, will be you know out of corona hopefully i'm putting my fingers crossed and i would like to uh, you know wish you a very very happy new year to everybody to yourself your family to, with everybody and uh, i'm sure that those who are at fi final years i'm sure that you will be getting the jobs in the core technical please make sure that you will be getting the jobs in the core technical Apart from the core technical, if you go to somewhere in the chemical engineering, somewhere in the call center, somewhere in the software and all, actually you'll earn the money but satisfaction will be zero. Please give a sincere chance to your own career, to, to your own branch. And if you if you fail there, then you can move around to another fields. But just, you know, you are from BTEC, from this university, this college and all actually, if you are getting a job in somewhere in software testing and all. Please, life is quite better than that. All right? So many new AI tools are coming to replace you guys. Don't don't get trapped into those areas. Okay, civil engineering is a very classy, magnificent line actually. Okay, and you can definitely join that line and make a career of this. I'm really enjoying my line, you know, with the fullest of my heart. All right? So thank you very much and see you next year. Bye-bye.